everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Shop Adventures, my weekly excursion where I leave the homestead here at Athletic Geek HQ in search of my bounty of comics, collectibles, graphic novels, action figures, and all things in between. First things first, time to talk about what stood out from last week's bounty, and my number one no question is Daredevil. Uh, the way that, that just a great story being told with the detective's obsession to... to take down the, you know, the vigilantes in Hell's Kitchen, you know, not just Daredevil, but the Punisher too. Uh, Daredevil being with the Punisher and just kind of, you know, kind of the, the I'm sure it's been done before, but just is, it felt really fresh in how they, you know, talked about the differences in Frank's philosophy to Matt's philosophy on justice and, you know, how both men still have the idea of helping the innocent and having the greater good, but their ideas of how to get there are just so, I don't know if it'd be really be polar opposite, but they're, you know, Frank's is taken to such an extreme that, you know, Matt just can't believe in it. And then, you know, there's a moment in there where he says like, where Matt says to him, this is what can happen if I became you. And I just thought it was just exceptional work. It was without question, the best book of my poll list, uh, from last week, and then on uh, uh, the the Batman was 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 all right. Uh, kind of a story of uh, Bruce's dream, and uh, it was all it was a big dance with Catwoman. But really, you know, it was like the dances they had, and then the dance in his dream, and you know, it kind of kind of helps soften the blow of why they didn't get married just a little bit. There's still a little uh, saltiness, but it, it it helps. It helps kind of you know ease some of the pain of where that story was and yeah those are what really uh the the justice league was all right with the, the legion of doom and the origin of the multiverse but for but for those for the most part uh it was uh, daredevil was far and away number one uh and you know batman was kind of a i want to say a distant number two but there it wasn't close to overtaking that spot uh, but that's pretty much it for this week. I'll see you back here at the homestead with my bounty from this week. Hey everyone, I am back here at the homestead here at Athletic Geek HQ. Have a moderately sized bounty here today, and we're going to jump right into it. The first things first is Avengers number 18, and I tried getting into Thor from last week's bounty, and it's kind of tied into a book I'm not reading. I'm going to give Avengers a chance, just like I'm giving Thor a chance, but it may be kind of a, uh, a more skimmable book. For the time being, since I'm not really wanting to pick up another book at this time and pick up War of the Realms, uh, the proper series, so yeah, it's just, you know, it's my own fault, you know, this, they, this is the way the comic book industry works, I can talk about how I'm not a huge fan of that trope, but it's the industry, it's how the industry works, and it's not going to change, so yeah, so, either way, I'm a completionist because I have liked the Avengers run so far, and... Here's number 18. From there, we go to something I am definitely not going to skim through, and that is Mr. and Mrs. X, number 10. I love this book. I love the work that's been done on this book. Uh, Kelly Thompson writes these characters, uh, you know, maybe not on Claremont level, but she's right underneath Chris Claremont on how good she can write these two characters. Uh, tells a good story about their relationship and how they both have their differences. And uh, she's wrote the Mojo whole universe, which is kind of like a, you know, a lot of people consider to be a campy, corny 90s character, but she's just done such a great job writing the story arc, and I'm excited to see it continue and possibly conclude Mr. and Mrs. X, number 10. And speaking of many series that I've committed to that I don't like, Heroes in Crisis, number 8. Yeah, just not digging it. You know, for, for, you know, I have I, I have a love-hate relationship with Tom King, and I'm just not digging this series. Uh, I really haven't from the, I mean, like, it was okay at first, but I'm really not digging it now, and maybe in a way, not trying to blame anything, because it is my own fault that I'm not picking up War of the Realms, but, you know, maybe, maybe me getting burnt on all these other, and it is DC, it's not Marvel, and much as I complain about Marvel's business tactics, this, this is a DC fuck up here. Um... You know, maybe that soured me on, on event books, you know, with uh, Doomsday Clock taking forever and uh, Heroes in Crisis just not kind of doing it for me. Maybe I'm just 
you know, no fault of their own. I'm just not really interested in what Marvel has right now. I wasn't really interested to be in what they were kind of selling me on with it, but, you know, maybe I would have been more apt to pick it up had I not been burnt twice by DC. Um, you know, I'm just not digging it. You know, it, it, Tom King is just kind of up and down with me, and as good as I hear Mr. Miracle is, and as up and down, you know, I mean, hell, it, 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 I loved... I liked at least, and you hear a lot of times me talk about how one of his Batman books was a was a pick of the week. This is just something I'm not feeling it on. So, but I'm gonna skim through it because it's 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 a book to read, and I'm I'm in too deep to quit collecting now. But this whole series may go up on eBay, and I might try to recoup some of the money I've invested into it. Number eight, Heroes in Crisis, and it is a crisis. From there, we go to Justice League Dark number 10, and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of not liking this book as much when I first put it on my list, but it's still decent enough for me to keep reading. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's on the chopping block, but it, it, it can see the block and it knows where it is, so, yeah, it's just kind of... Just haven't been feeling it as much, and that hurts me to say, but I just have not been feeling this book as much, and, you know, it might be time to make cuts. I, I've, I've seen in the solicitations there are some other books that I do want to check out here in the coming months, and if it can't really pick it up, I may have to cut it just because I stay within a decent budget for other books that I want to read. But nonetheless, uh, I picked up number 10, and let's see what it has to offer. From there, we go to Batman Detective Comics, number 1002, and the continuation of the Arkham Knight story. Uh, I love Peter Tomasi. I, I enjoy kind of what they were doing uh, with uh, the last issue of this. And yeah, I this is this is one of the books that I always really get excited about, uh, especially now that Tomasi's taken over. I, I love this book. And I am so giddy to see what all of that stuff that we saw in the last issue. What's it about? What is it leading to? You know, it could be a home run, it could be a strikeout. You don't know, but they've planted the seeds with last Detective Comics issue that I'm, I'm excited about this one. So, yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to this one. Detective Comics, number 1002. And from there we go to The Flash, number 69. Yeah. More trickster shenanigans, and I fucking love it. I <laughs> the, the trickster's grown on me since he was in the uh, CW uh, show, and I've liked the trickster arc so far. It's been very, just been a really, really cool arc, and kind of a different uh, side of The Flash that you uh, may not quite used to seeing, and I thought it was really, it's really good, and, you know, the, I, I, I've dubbed it on this show, the, uh, the most, uh, the best kept secret in comics is The Flash, and, yeah, I, I, I don't understand why more people aren't reading this book, but it's definitely, uh, definitely a great book and a great story arc so far. Flash, number 69. We go from there to Superman Action Comics, number 1010. And they're continuing the spiral storyline with kind of a kind of an espionage with Superman kind of story. And I gotta give Bendis credit for trying something new with uh, Superman, and it's not bad, but it's just not something that I'm really super digging. Uh, I've, I've said it because there's a Superman book every week, so I'll, I'll just continue to just beat a dead horse. Bendis needs to be on one book or the other. So we can get a different voice, not like so much change character, but just a different kind of voice writing Superman in the on one side of things because it feels a little monotonous over two books, even though they are doing something different. Just it feels like the same. I don't know. I, I mean, I hope I'm explaining this clearly for uh, for you the viewers, but yeah, um, it's different. It's interesting. You know, all the props in the world for for trying something new without completely. But in a way that wouldn't alienate, in my opinion, alienate old or, you know, more traditionalist fans of Superman, you know, uh, not to pick on him, but, uh, like, Dan Slott won, you know, try something new with the Superior Spider-Man with Doc Ock living in Peter's body, and while I personally wasn't a fan and other people were fans, the idea of doing it in that manner alienated certain Spider-Man fans. 
this is something new with Superman, but it's not done in a way that I feel could alienate fans in a similar way. And I'm sorry, Mr. Slot, for picking on you right there. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, Action Comics, number 1010. Let's see what's up. And finally, to close out the bounty for the week, we have Terrifics number 15 and a new creative team. That can mean good things, that can mean bad things. I'm, I'm a Jeff Lemire fan, and his name is what uh, what got me to check out this book in the first place. And I've enjoyed it. It's never, it, it hasn't always been, you know, a, a pick of the week, but it's always, when, when it's been around, but it's always been decent. Um... I'm going to have to see if the uh, new writer, who, I mean, no no disrespect to the writer, I'm not fully aware of how to say his name or who he is, but, you know, um, I've enjoyed the characters. Lemire's made me care about the characters, and if the, the new writer can um, keep me interested in that manner, it, it's a book that will, will stay on my pull list, and I'll continue to read. Uh... We're just going to have to see. It's it's a new writer. It's a new voice. It's new times for the Terrifics. And a new price tag because it's gone. It was one of the last remaining uh, $2.99 uh, DC books. And now it has finally bumped up that extra dollar to $3.99. So new beginning for the Terrifics. And we will see. Uh, we'll see what I think about it. And that is pretty much it for my bounty this week. Let me know what you picked up at your local comic shop in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and like to see us like it, please like, share, and subscribe. I have videos not just from the world of comics, but from the world of pro wrestling, gaming, and all things geek culture. Be sure to check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash athleticgeek89 for more content, including my collection comic of the week blog. That is every Thursday, and it is exclusive to my Facebook page. But I'm out. Y'all be cool. Later.